Uh, first of all, welcome everybody um, to the uh, fourth in the series, The Noise, uh, The Noise Podcast. I am Kev The Noise Davis, and first of all, a big thanks to The Noise Boys for their music you would have heard at the start, and you'll hear again at the end. And obviously, thanks to Isolation Studios for the use of this very plush setting. So, uh, on to my next guest. First of all, Brad and Rachel, welcome. Mum and Dad to uh, the superstar driver, Mr. Zach. Um, first of all, Zach, welcome. I hope your first Thanks. podcast. Yes, this Proper is my one. first. Proper one. All right. What we're going to do is um, continue the same theme as in all the shows, talking about carts to cars. Um, but your journey is uh, an awful lot quicker than most because you're only 12 years of age. Yeah. You've been through an awful lot of karting already and already into extremely fast cars. We'll talk about those in a bit. But we're going to get into your karting career first. And we're going to talk about how you started, what you went through. We might talk about costs, but that's what we've got your dad here for, because he'll tell us about the costs. Um, what it takes to be a, a good kart racer, and then we'll, we'll go on from there. So first of all, we're going to start with your four years of age. Um, I think granddad raced, great granddad raced, dad raced, everyone in the family is a bit of a racer. Yeah. So it was always going to happen. Tell us how it started. What did you do first at four years of age? Well, first started when dad bought me a second-hand kart, and we um, got everything fitted up for my size, because I was quite small at the time. And um, we went down to the block at the end of our street, and um, we had a rope attached to the back. That's to stop you from racing away, obviously. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Was. Yeah. That, yeah. That was the safety. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until I um, eventually got on the noise pedal and um, went too fast for Dad and his, and he flopped over. <laughs> <laughs> Dra dragged into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think lesson learned there. He wants a bit of speed, and obviously you've seen a bit of. Uh, Passion in him. Yeah, he, to go. he did. Yep. Yeah. Um, five years of age, it uh, moved on to dirt cars. So straight from running around around the circles to a bit of a circuit at Ipswich City Dirt Car Club, I think, where Hatton Vale ran. Yeah, Hatton Vale. And your first go in a proper go kart on a circuit, um, which I call it steer, right, turn, left, all that kind of thing. But how did yeah. that go? Your first time in a, in a proper go kart with other drivers on the circuit, obviously? I mean, yeah, it was right, but um, like the other drivers there were a lot like older, but. Still went alright and like that, finishing top five position yeah. positions yeah. and um, it was like different to like driving on like the block down the road but eventually yeah. got a hold of it yeah. and moved yeah. out of it. And it's really a cut club, if it was the same as what the stuff that I commentate there, they go in different directions Yeah, one, and they run at night. Yeah, one, one weekend like we would go there and go out the gate right and then the next would go left. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you got used to not only going in different directions but also racing under lights. Yeah. Well, we, did, we didn't do many of them but right. um we did a couple. Yeah. All right. And how did you think your first go in a go kart went then and did, was that did that give you even more of a buzz to get more into it? You you kind of found that found the, the desire you wanted to go further? Yeah, um like once I had my first go like in like a circuit race and all that I um, kind of found like the adrenaline rush and I liked it, yeah. so we um, at that, kept on at, doing at that. At that age, five years of age, sitting on the sitting on the start line at Ipswich City Dirt Car Club, were, you, were the nerve jangling? Were you like, oh my God, you know, and, and, and until you got going and then it calmed down? Is, was that then as it would be for me now? Is that, is that how it was? Yeah, at the time, like, I had a bit of a nerve because I was a lot younger than the other kids and all that, but um, after a while, eventually, like, getting used to it all, and eventually settled down and then yeah. like as the race went on just yeah. forgot about that and worried about more about the race yeah uh, more about your lines and your breaking yeah. points and and i guess that was a, the, your first feel of uh, learning where to break where to put your foot on the throttle where, yeah. where to steer how to how to go fast around corners so then you moved six years of age where all those skills were doing really important yes. to t-bar on bitumen now very different going from dirt to bitumen yeah. was that something you found really hard to get used to or did you quickly click yeah, into that i mean it was a different like driving style because like obviously like you're on the dirt that has like not as much grip but then like you move to the asphalt and like you got heaps of grip and um the car wants to rotate more but um like after those first five races and a couple of um like practice sessions with um dave and tom Keneally, um yeah. we um get used to it yeah yeah i gotta ask you Going from dirt and the setup you'd need to put into a five-year-old and a six-year-old's car, going into bitumen, did you have to change much and teach him much about car setup, car feel, and, and get feedback from a, a driver at such a young age to know how to make a car go better? Probably not. Um, I always just let him go. 
and let him deal with it himself because, in my opinion, there's no race cars ever perfect. No one can ever give you something that's perfect. So it's something that he needs to learn to deal with as a race car driver. Yeah. And yeah. Everything's never perfect. Yeah. So yeah. he needs to deal with that. Yeah. So we never did a lot of work. Yeah. We, we The carts weren't much different. Obviously, we used a different cart. Yeah. And it was set up with different tyres and, and that. And we just used to let him yeah. load around. Yeah. And obviously, Dave Keneally helped him out heaps. Yeah. He was our first sort of coach. And yeah. he helped Zach tremendously and got him going. And then yeah. we, yeah. So. Was that just having fun as well? Yeah. And, and, and was it all about, when you got to Bitumen, was it all about learning breaking points, yeah. apexes of corners? Yeah, it was more And about getting around corners fast, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, it was being about, like, consistent and, like, like keeping like those lines and like just keep advancing and getting faster. Yeah. At yeah. this age, did you know at this age now what understeer was and and what rear end no. grip loose? You, did you hadn't learned that yet? Yeah, I hadn't quite learned that yet. But like I would just say, Dad, the car feels slippery. Like, yeah, I right. Wouldn't so know it's, much it's not going where you wanted to go. You're pointing and going. Yeah. It wasn't so so you 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 gotten used to what was going to go on, but you hadn't quite yet worked out. How to dial it out. Yeah, like I didn't know anything about the setup yet. I, of course, with my age, I didn't know much about the yeah, carts. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I just used to go and watch and do that stuff. Now, at seven years of age, you got your KA licence. Yeah. I think that's the earliest you can get a KA licence. Yeah, you get a practice licence yep. at six, and yep. then you do an OLS, and then you're allowed to race at seven years yep. old. On your C plates. So now you've got an official KA licence. You're going to do a whole championship at Toowoomba? Yeah, we did the um, Toowoomba championship. Yeah. Um, at six. At six, yes. Yeah, because Toowoomba at that time was a, wasn't it KA. Was, yeah. but, you, but you got your license after that anyway. So Yeah, we did right. a whole season yeah. at Toowoomba yeah. at six yeah. years old, which yeah. gave Sebastian, Eskandari, and Zach gave them a massive head start into racing yeah. At, yeah. At, a, at a different level, too. Yeah. So. yeah. So how did your first season go at Toowoomba? Full season of racing in a Cadet 9 class at Toowoomba. How did that go? Yeah, like we had a couple nominations, but there wasn't many. But we still went all right. Like we were like always on the podium. And like we always had Seb with us. So yeah. he was always out the front and yeah. trying to catch him all the time. Was it always clockwise or did they change it very often with you? Um, both. Like twice or three times a year would go anti-clockwise. Yeah, right. Did you prefer it clockwise or prefer it anti-clockwise? I probably preferred anti-clockwise because you? you get to go down the massive hill yeah. when you turn right down the it's all about speed. Speed. Yeah, so you just <laughs> like going, again, you just like going fast. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and you must get nervous seeing it go so fast, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just don't watch. Oh, no, one of them, yeah. that's exactly me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Club Championship, then. Where did you come in that one? What, how, how did you... Um, for the Toowoomba one? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think that's I... seven years of age. Yes. So wow. I think I got um, third in that yeah. one or wow. in the second. First one, yeah. The first yeah. one was third, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's great going for a seven-year-old, eh? Yeah. So that really got you into um, what, what, what would be your newer style and technique of driving and yes. then you'll start to learn things and tweak things as you go from there. So yeah. that's, that's where it really started. Yeah, like I started. It's not where it's going to finish, but where it really started. <laughs> yeah, like I start building like more like understanding of the card yeah. and... Like, especially with that year advance, like on that KI license, yeah. like getting to know more about the car and all that before that first proper year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I guess that's something where you hear as kids get older and older, and you can't help but notice when you go to a racetrack, everybody that is a car race mentioned, they're all tinkering with the car. They're all doing something in between races, before they've even started qualifying, before they've even started practice, someone tinkering with the go car. Do you find that when you get there, you'd rather not do too much with it, let him get out first, get a feel for it, see how it is, then come back and start to do what needs to be done to change it and make it better? And that, that's probably a speedway thing. Like we always went to the racetrack, you have a basic setup and you start there and you adjust from there. So yeah. that's probably how he was always taught. Yeah, yeah. And you always had a base setup then? Yeah. You're happy with the base setup. You go in, feedback now. And, and again, so we're moving on to 2020 now. Um, JT Motorsport and Project X, it was the start of the first big year in it, but I think COVID yeah. hit with, in that one. It was a COVID year, so you we didn't left. really get a full we were, season out We were on. fortunate enough that year that um, early that year, JT and William, oh, yeah, yeah would, um, we went and did some testing at the Bend. We took him to the Bend Motorsport yeah. Complex in South Australia, Puck went Puck across Puck. to Puckapunyal, did a little bit of testing, and then COVID hit. So that sort of shut that all down. So. Yeah, because you were going to go nationals. We this, were going this, to do the this, nationals. This, this was the, the, the start of what was going to be your first 
year at AKC. Yes. The, the biggest <laughs> kart race series in the country, For which is now kids. getting more and more popular. And they've allowed cadet nines into it, so it's just phenomenal yes. that they would get that kind of experience. Yes. So that was kind of scuppered because of COVID. But then a year later, 2021, again, Will Yarwood and Johnny Jargett, AKC, the start of the first national series in AKC. How did that feel arriving in an event where suddenly there's, like, what is it, what, 300 odd yeah. entries in, in those days? Yeah. How was that? Yeah, in cadet nine, we had about 30, like, Going from like your average club meet where you had about 15 people on the track to like where you had 30, it was a big step up. Um, but like after a couple rounds and like slowly getting better with the card as the year went on as well, because we had a new parallel in that year. Yeah. As the year before we had a JC. Yeah. 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 Like getting used to all that sort of stuff. With it, with the parallel and the JCs, a similar kind of chassis. Very. very yeah. Yeah, very similar. Because originally yeah. I thought it was yes. the, the transfer was that it became the parallel, but. The, there was little, all these car chassis, they add little bits of Tiny adjustment bits. you can make with them. Tiny and bits. they kind of, they, they, they say it's better for the driver, but you still got to tune it. You still got to That's make right. it work for the driver. So, but you, you got on with the new chassis, you're happy with it and everything was good? Yeah, everything was good with that chassis. And which tracks did you go to in your first AKC year then? Where did you race at? Um, we started off the year with um, Ipswich, and yeah. that year was only a four race year. Right. Because. COVID was at the start of the year. Yep, yep. So Ipswich. Ipswich. Um, Melbourne. That, so that was the Queensland one. So they didn't have Emerald that year. No. So no. that so Ipswich you raced. And the other ones? Ipswich, Melbourne. That's um, Todd Road? Yep. Yeah, yep. Todd Road. Todd Road. Two of the really good circuits in the country to awesome. have a crack at. Go on. Yeah. And then we had Monado. Yeah. That was another South one. Australia. Monado and Bolivar. Track. And Bolivar. And Bolivar. Oh, no. Where's uh, Bolivar's? South Both Australia. in South Australia. Yeah, right. So the South so they. Both South Australia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, performances. How'd you go in the um, year? So Ipswich, we started off with a pretty good result. I was a bit surprised about this one. Um, we ended up fourth. Yeah. After a good weekend, and yeah. then after that, um, we had Todd Road. Um, surprised myself and put it on pole for the for, for like qualifying. Yeah. Wow. And then yeah. led most of the weekend. Got a couple. Got third and first in the heat races. Yeah. Started off pole, and I ended up second for the second round. Wow. Cool. And yeah. then, Can I just ask you a question on the, on the truck? You did get a picture, I hope, with you and the cart and the city in the background. Yeah. Oh, we got. You better add that because yeah. that's the famous. Everybody gets that picture because at Todd Road, it's famous for the the oh, backdrop of the background. city. It's just beautiful. So cool. Beautiful. Yeah. It's an excellent track. It's a great track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the other one. Um, third round was Bolivar. Yeah. We had a pretty good weekend there. Probably could have advanced myself a little bit better, but obviously being off the outside there. You can never really get a good run out of turns one and two. Yeah. So we um, ended up in third for that weekend. It's quite a tight, twisty track, isn't it, by the way? Yeah. It's hard turn, to, no, no real slipstreaming, and it's, it's, it's awkward to get going on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and turns one and two was really tight, and there's no real room for, um, yeah. like, to P2 to get yeah. around there. Yeah, so. right, yeah. Right. yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, and then for the fourth round, we um, had a all right weekend. We didn't qualify the best, but... Um, we got up through the weekend and like advanced our positions and then come to the final. Um, there was an accident right in front of me and I went back, yeah. back to like 10th and then yeah. I got back to 6th and then Seb came through and got 6th and I ended yeah. up 7th. Yeah. And then I ended up tied for 2nd on the points. Yeah, right. Overall. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Um, in that year, were there drop down bumpers yes. in effect? Yes. Yeah, so again, I, I like the fact that, I mean, some people hate them, some people love them. It teaches people that you, you can't just rush into something. You've got to really try to leave space. If you're going to attack, you've got to be really committed mm -hmm. and be alongside. You can't sort of start nudging people and mm -hmm. bump drafts Crash and all that crushing. kind of stuff because it's it's going to get penalised. Yes. Some people say you get brake checked, and I'm, I'm not sure that happens all the time. Uh, apparently it does, but I don't know. But, uh, but I think that can aid someone's, progress in their technique in kart racing because you can't just rush in and, and start bashing you've got to bear in mind you've got to predict their breaking point and either go for your breaking point knowing where they are or go for the pass mm -hmm. is that yeah. something you got into very quickly because this is your first year of akc or one yeah. and a half years of akc it's a real steep learning curve in what is a very competitive yeah. thing so were you conscious of not getting too close to the cars in front and being very decisive in your overtakes? I mean, a little bit, but, like, um, it was very tight racing in Ipswich, and obviously over, like, the two years that we had already done, 
prior to AKC, like I got to learn like the craft of overtaking cleanly. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff. So third in the Australian Cup Championships. Yeah. You also got third in the Queensland Cup Championships up at Emerald. Yeah. So even though the Queensland the AKC is up there a lot, you didn't get to go in the year of AKC, but you did get to go up there yes. in Queensland Cup Championships and third in that one. Yeah, did you like that track? Yeah, it was a good weekend. Um, it's very fast down the straights. I yeah. think even in the Cadet Nine, we got up to about a hundred. Wow, that's wow. quite fast for our Cadet yeah. Nine. Mm. Yeah, and the, it's good lights in there. Did you? They must have run some under lights there. No, oh. not back then. They didn't oh have right, okay, because so. they've got really good lights. I yeah. Think, so yeah. Yeah, they do. So that was good fun. Yeah, great. That was um, great fun. Transition then to Patrizzi, Patrizzi course, yeah. I believe. So you've gone from well, Project X into Patrizzi course, new team, um, and then another state championships at Warwick, another third? Yeah, we had third. How was it gone? Yeah, we um, did um, the last round of them as well, and we also did the Warwick ones with them. Yeah. How did you find the transition from Team A to Team B? So Will Yarwood's team, I don't know, Will has a lot of drivers underneath his tent, uh, uh, yeah. Big events, Tepatrizzi course. They got a truck as well. It's a bit different. Oh, everyone's getting trucks nowadays. But how did you feel the transition from one to another? Were there different things to learn with another team? Were they more uh, let's let's were, were they more focused on different aspects to what you were used to? What, what was it like being with a different team? What yeah. did they teach you? Well, they well, it was a very different car. That was something to learn. Um, like getting to learn the car and like. The teams they were a bit different. Like they, um, Petruzzi, they were they had like lots of people there helping and mechanics, mechanics yeah. lots of people, yeah. very yeah. professional, yeah. Yeah. very yeah. different, very like professional, like yeah. very serious, like just a serious, yeah. Yeah. very serious environment, yeah. tech and guys and yeah. computers. Mm -hmm. and so, at what, was excellent. at what point did you go from being a, a kart racer and learning how to set a kart up? And go fast around corners and learn breaking points and understeer, oversteer. To data, when did data come into it? Well, that that mostly came in at like when we first went when we the twenty one season when we started doing AKC. I started to learn some about the data, but I didn't really understand it yeah. until that second year of AKC yeah. With, yeah. with Patrizzi. And the data they would teach you, I guess. I think what I've seen of it, it's it shows where you're on the power, where you're on the brakes, mm. at which point in corners. And they, from that, overlay it with a fast lap and tell you where you should be braking, yeah. where you should be accelerating. Yeah, and then in Patrice's, we had um, our, we had a teammate, yeah. also in Cadet 12. Yeah. So um, we got to, like, overlay the data, and that, yeah. that was good to, like, to see, like, where he was fast and where I was faster. What kind of improvements did you get from using data then? Like what, if, what difference would it make in a, in, a, in a lap time, for example? Like different break times. Like, it would make up, like, a couple tenths in yeah. some corner. Right. So like trying to like like seeing what they're doing right and then yeah. seeing what I'm doing right, it's like a good experience to do. And and when when he says a couple of tenths, we're talking in a field of K three, K fours, even cadet twelves and cadet nines, a couple of tenths can be five places on the grid. Can That's be right. more. So <laughs> it's very important Especially that you've learned those things. things. Mm. Yeah. Emerald. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Cool. Right now. Um at some point then, moving on straight into K A four. Yeah, that was a big change. So that was a big change because these carts now, before they went to the KA3 era, the KA4s were known to be a, a quick cart and kids that jump from 12s into KA4s suddenly have a very fast machine underneath them. Yeah. How was the transition for you? How did you feel that went? Like getting to learn the bigger cart, like we had the junior cart at the stage, I had the Ricardo, it was definitely a big learning curve, different tyres, we had the Quants and then like getting to learn how to like different braking markers, different lines. And fitness. Yeah. And your yeah. fitness. Like did you, my did you do gymnasium? Did you, did you have to get fit in the gym oh. in order to do these or just? A little bit yeah. with my arms. Yeah. All right. Your neck. Yeah. yeah. Like it was more just about doing laps and more laps yeah. to like work up my neck and yeah. my arms. What was the difference in the, what was the difference in the tyres like? Oh. Did they come on later? Were they more grippy? Were they what were they like? I felt like the Laquans had a lot more grip to the Maxes. Yeah. Like like mid corner, like the um Laquans would just grip up and drive off the corner. Yeah. Whereas the Laquans, they were I mean, sorry, the Laquan yeah, Maxis yeah. would just like like a little bit of slide mid corner, it was yeah. less grip. Right. So they wouldn't yeah. take off as well out of a corner as well. So but interesting that you'd spot that there, because obviously we're still talking about a very a very young kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So already learning that stuff shows that you 
you're kind of computing what you need to compute in the brain in order to put into practice what you need to to make it go fast on a track, which shows in your performances. I'm, I'm not going to reel them off because there's too many, like 135, no. but it, there's a lot that you've, you've come a long way. But KA4 became KA3, yes. which again was another transition, another change. How did you feel that change? Went? Was it much different or was it sort of an easy transition and you felt okay with it? Well, it was another big change again because we had to um, move into the um, senior chassis, yeah. which was another big change, learning to like, learn the width of the track, which also means different lines again, drift, different braking marker because like the different weight comparison. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a bigger restrictor, which means different braking markers again. Yeah. So it was a big and you, change. And you'd gone into the KA3 Junior Light class. Yes. which was the really competitive one it's where everybody went because they all wanted to be super so competitive and it just had big big fields straight away yeah we, there was a lot of kids there that were you know between like mainly 13 to 15 so yeah. he was only was, yeah. like 11. just 11 years yeah, old yeah, then, yeah. So. dispensation to be in there again we had to apply to karting australia for dispensation how, how do you do that what what does he have um, to prove competence at a, at a track at a different he, level or obviously or? he had the akc finishes and state championships and that, but the weight of him in Cadet 12, they've upped the weight now, but in Cadet 12, we were starting to struggle for weight, which yeah. we, we were too heavy. Yeah. So it was, just, it was just time to move. So. Yeah, all right. And they were okay with it. Once you've and they, gone they, through the hoops that you needed yeah, to get through, we they through were, the hoops they and, were and we moved yeah. on. So uh -huh. And we were all really lucky that he was allowed to yeah. move on to the yeah. and, and race in that. And we yeah. knew it was going to be a hard year yeah. that year because yeah. yeah. he was so young. So. Yeah. But KA3, you enjoyed it? Yeah, it was, it was a good learning curve yeah. and it was like a good class to race in with all like the numbers and yeah. like the amount of competition. It would have always been fairly full grids too, wouldn't Very. it? Especially at Ipswich. Yeah. Like Some of them the last year were like 38 card grids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's so you enormous. really have to know how yeah, to pass. And, and, and there's a lot of ups and downs in that class. Like mm -hmm. you watch it today, we watch it there and... You know, someone will just give you a little tap, love tap, and bang into the bush yeah, you go. Yeah. And it's it's a common thing in that class to get knocked yeah. around. So he okay. had to learn the ups and downs of racing. Yeah. And, and it's so good, especially in the minute, because they're live on the YouTube channel, so everybody can watch their races yeah. back. It's so cool. Yeah. Sometimes it's a disaster because some of them go upsy derby and turvy. Yeah. You've not been upside down yet. Never. No. But I've, been, I've been driven over twice. So yeah, just don't do it in a sprint car. Right, <laughs> carry on. Um, one at Newcastle, I got driven over, and again in the K3 Junior Light class, they ran over my wrist. Oh, damaged it? Oh, hurt. Yeah, ouch, ouch. Now, um, we're going to move on, because that's your karting career. It's been really interesting so far, but obviously the way you're heading, uh, and different to some drivers. Some drivers go Toyota 86s, Super 2, Super 3, V8 Supercars, Formula 1. You're going the other way. You're going to, you're going to ovals. So you're going to sprint cars, but you got the chance to run a 600 restricted micro sprint in America. Yes. Tell us how that came about. Oh, um, so it came about last year when Dad came up with a great idea to go over to America and race to get my name out there yeah. in America at a young age and also to get to know the cars here, like over in America yeah. before we started the year here. Yeah. And you got contacts that you knew that you got you in there. So how, how, did, how did that eventuate? What did you do? Um, we did business with a with the trip with the Australian distributor for Triple X Race chassis. Yeah. Um, so my mate there, Mark Baddock, he he um, he arranged another guy and said that this guy could help us, and um, he sort of organised things, and it all just happened. And yeah. We were able to get a car done, yeah. get a car put together, and yeah. got it all happening. So it yeah. was excellent. Yeah. And which track tracks did you race at? We just went to Deming Speedway, so just a small 290-metre track yeah. in, up in the top of Washington, above Washington State, above Seattle. Yeah. Um, just to, and we raced four times there last year yeah. at the one track. So 85, 90 horsepower in a yeah. car from a, what, 20 horsepower go-kart? Yeah. How was that for an adrenaline rush? Yeah, big change as well, like with the downforce because of the wing that mm. you had as well, and then such a tiny track, just like you pretty much come out of one corner, yeah. and then with the speed, you pretty much go on the next one and try and make it through there. Yeah. Now, I know it's where he's <laughs> headed, but yeah. how were the nerves knowing that he's gone from a go-kart, which is, you'd think was relatively safe, yeah. but into a much faster, you know, form of motorsport in, in what is really high-powered, yeah. 
environment. How I, did you I, feel? I prefer the speedway personally. That's yeah. that's me. Um, yeah. I think it's safer. He's contained. There's an ambulance there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, me, I prefer him in that. Yeah. Um, and he loves it. So yeah. you know, what do yeah. you do? Yeah. <laughs> Transition car to car. Then what? What was the learning curve? How did you first of all teach him what he needs to know to go from a a go kart sitting in there and and being able to be visible now strapped into a vehicle where he's you know enclosed but he's, he's got to learn how to pedals and gears and all sorts because it is i think it's out one gear and then you stay in the same gear don't you, you in the 600s yeah you start in second and yeah. then you bash it into third yeah you got a clutch so there's lots of things to teach him yeah, yeah. um you know he had to learn how to use a clutch and gears he'd never done that before in go-kart racing yeah so we had to teach him that yeah. um the rest of it I thought like he's pretty clever. He he he's done enough racing now and he's he's very clever at racing. So he he sort of works it out pretty good for himself. So one of the biggest things is the probably the change what he's gotta look for is the change in the track conditions. Bitumen doesn't change too much mm. during a, a race. It does yeah. over a day, but yeah. mm. the track conditions on a speedway track can, yeah. can change like that. Yeah. So that's something he's you, you could have almost remembered what you did in Ipswich City Dirt Cart Club then because that track condition changes mm. over the course of a night because it's dirt and it gets rubbered up. And, and again, you, you'll be used to sort of turning one way to steer the other. So that mental knowledge from, oh, what, hey, it's only five years ago, but, but that's what you'd almost put into play in now the, in the 600 micro sprint. So was that easy for you to get used to? Did you find that you were comfortable in driving around a corner and letting it get loose and, and still putting your hammer down? Yeah, I feel like I was like I, I had some learning things to do like in the car, but I felt like I was already comfortable in the car. Yeah. Like when I first hopped in it, yes, I had to learn the gears and clutch, but when it came to actually driving the car, I felt pretty comfortable with yeah, it. Yeah, cool. And performances over there was just it's all about learning, I guess. It was good yeah. fun and going fast and yeah. and being Chris where Stein. I think you're heading eventually. Sprint car racing. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Big opportunity came next then. And obviously, uh, thanks to Tim and Melissa in the, 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 the Newton camp to race their uh, Formula 500. Yeah, it yeah. was um, like, I really appreciate what they've done for us. And the little car was, Ryan had finished racing it and Tim had sort of, and then Taylor was going to race it and then she decided not to do it. And the car was sitting on top of their toilet in their shed. So, um he, I asked him, did he have any engines? And, and Tim said, just come and get the whole lot. And he said, I know you have to look after it and I'll be happy to help Zach, yeah. like, go along. So so you've raced at, uh, let's let's bring them off, T-Bar? Um, Lismore, Gladstone. Um, at the new Makoska Stadium, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah, It's a great place. Yeah. Maribara. Maribara, which yes. kind of, Where was it? Where, where did you finish there? Where was it? Um, one. One, first. Yeah. What a win. Last I mean, Gatton. 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 You won a Gatton. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you've been winning in that one already. Yeah, I've had three wins. Yeah, that's brilliant. And you like that one? You've gotten used to that straight away then, obviously. And I guess against other kids that are trying to also learn the ropes and, and, and get fast, there'll be some experienced kids in there as well. As, as, I think adults can race in that against you as well, can't they? Not, um, in, not here. In America, they did. Right, okay. So you've only raced people, well, juniors in yours then, in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. They're up to 16. Well, up to 16, yeah. up to 16 years oh, old. Hang on then. So you've raced, uh, that's an adult. <laughs> so you've raced 16 year olds. Yeah. They'll be hairy buggers. Yeah, they'll yeah. shave. And you're, you're, not, you're only 12. <laughs> yeah. Wow, three wins, and that's been fabulous. That's really good. Um, a little thing at the end there, obviously, with um, still racing the KA3, and uh, Ipswich Car Club, I think you got a fabulous award there from the from the committee at Ipswich. Yeah, um, I got Drivers of Driver Award uh, last year, which was Norman. Yeah. Which is nominated by the um, IKC yeah. like officials. Yeah. And so every single junior goes in, in for that one, and yeah. that's in all junior classes. Mm. And you got junior driver, driver of the year. Yeah, fabulous, fabulous, buddy. Actually, that's his way on and off the track. You know how he promotes himself, the yeah. things that he does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's your um? What's your goal? Because obviously this helmet, everybody, is your car helmet. Yeah. This one with the tear offs is your sprint car helmet. Yeah. Which one you're going to use from now on in? Probably more. this one. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one you want to go with. Yeah. That's the one you want to get dirty. Yeah. And you want to get not dirty for thirty, but at least fifty lappers, don't you? Yeah. Um, what's your What's your goal now? Um, progressing from the junior class, what What do you What do you, what do you want to get to? I mean, my main goal is probably to go to America and race full time sprint cars um, in the World of Outlaws and um, High Limit Series. Yeah. 
Wow, so that's a proper goal. Yeah. Yeah. You know you're going to have to build some chassis for that. We're going to have to sell some chassis. <laughs> <laughs> and win the lotto. And yeah. win the lotto. <laughs> Mate, listen, it's been absolutely fabulous having you. I'm going to wrap it up there because we've managed to get exactly 30 minutes. Well done. Perfect timing. It's been fabulous having you all. So thanks for coming and being part of the fourth Noise podcast. Um, great story, mate. Really good. And good luck for the future. It's been great having you and it's great following your journey because I've seen you from tiny up to where you are now and you've really progressed well. So thank you and uh, well done. Well done. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you for having, having us. Thank All you. good. Thank you. <laughs>